Oh, hello everyone, and welcome to another Coat Sync stream. Uh, this time, however, it's not just my face going to be here. There's some, some special guests because today is a fog stream. And not just any fog stream. We do have a very, very cool announcement to make at the same time. So, without further ado, I will bring on the special guests. But there's one more thing I wanted to announce. And one more thing I wanted to mention. Was anyone paying attention yesterday? Did you, not, did you see Fogs included in the Nintendo Indie World Showcase? Uh, because that's our official announcement that Fogs is definitely coming to Nintendo Switch. So I hope you got to see it. If not, we will show you the clip a little bit later on today in the show. But for a special Fodcast, Fodcast? Fogcast. There we go. I'm not going to get used to saying that. I thought it was funny. Now it's difficult to say. <laughs> right. For a special Fogcast today. We've brought the boys all the way here from various points of the country to share with you some insight and some dev stories and silliness from the creation of Fogs. So if I do the wonderful button, which hopefully should work and show you the boys, as you can see from left to right, or your left to right, because the boys are gonna get confused now, we've got Henry, James, and Doug. So you wanna wave at the camera, guys? There you go. See, they are real. I haven't, I have like locked them in this room with me. What you can't see on on stream is they are literally like two feet away from me, the other side of my monitor. So this <laughs> this big expansive set that it looks like, they're just they're just there. So you'll hear them. You'll hear them. Right now, I'm unmuting them. Oh, there's some echo there. Here you go. Hello, hello. Hey. Say hello, boys. Hello. Hey. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> right. So before. I keep talking because you you really don't want to hear so much from me. You want to hear from them. Let me let them introduce themselves and basically what they do on Fogs. Because I don't think anyone here has particularly met Bitloom yet, perchance, because they hide away. We're the, we do the face stuff. They do the making the game look awesome and cute and adorable and sound awesome. So let's let them introduce themselves. Doug, what do you do on Fogs and what is your place at Bitloom? Uh, I am predominantly... The artists on the team and also just like help out with design stuff yeah how about you james <laughs> a mix uh i'm one of the programmers and also doing design um and just messing around trying to make fun things come to life yeah i um am the other programmer and i also write the music as well and yeah we all contribute on the design of the game so Oh, that's awesome. That's exactly what we want to hear. So everyone wants to know, Fox, this wonderful thing, how does it feel to finally be at the point where stuff is being announced? Uh, it's amazing. It's definitely something we've waited a long time for. We've shown the game at events, uh, but it's very different having it out there in the world and seeing it on the Nintendo stream yesterday was yeah. amazing. It's so cool. Definitely like a childhood dream of mine <laughs> to be like on a Nintendo platform. So. Yeah, it's been a very surreal experience so far. Just it all very suddenly feels very real. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. We've got some Surprise. we've got some uh, pictures that have been going up on Twitter and stuff of Fogs actually being shown in the uh, hall itself in Gamescom yeah. playable on Switch yeah, right yeah. now, which is pretty insane. That must be like I know you've, obviously we've been at events now for nearly two years with mm -hmm. Fogs, yeah. but this is not us. Like it's not us. This, this is an official thing. Mm -hmm. How's that feel? Yeah, it's, really, really good. Yeah, I can't believe they. <laughs> I can't believe believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Like seeing it there next to Hollow Knight in the Gamescom hall is. I know. Yeah, yeah. that's mad. It's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Well, so the main reason we are here today is we have one special announcement to make about Fogs on another platform, and some of you may have already noticed as it's down on the screen already, <laughs> <laughs> because I want to make sure you wishlist it. It's down on the screen because Fogs is officially coming to Steam. Now, that's actually not usually that controversial, but yeah, it's coming to Steam. <laughs> <laughs> so we are currently, as you go on to Steam, you'll be able to find, if I do a nice switcheroo here, you'll be able to see our wonderful new Steam page. You will see shiny new screenshots. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, boys, you've got to figure out which way around the camera is now. Here you go. Oh, right. Well done. Thank, you. Thank you to my assistant over there. <laughs> so we have, a, we have a brand new scene page. We have some brand new screenshots that 
You may have seen if you visited the Nintendo website uh, from yesterday. But these are the brand new shots. And of course, we have the actual description and the wonderful gifts that just <laughs> bring out the character of the game because a, like single screens don't, single screens? Screenshots don't necessarily do it justice. <laughs> we've, got <a> question, <laughs> we've got a question from the chat already, which I have to bring up is, when are you going to do cats? Oh, cats or fats? <laughs> <laughs> Nah. I don't know. I mean, like, anyone, <laughs> anyone, <laughs> are you all dog people? Is this a is this a dog people stream? I, I mean, if you're in a room with Doug, when a dog appears, you know he's a dog person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next stream we need someone to bring the dog in, and all we're gonna do is give the dog to Doug, and then <laughs> that's, that's content right there. Yeah, him, yeah. Doug will lose his mind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we have we have the new Steam page. I guess we just went over that everything is. It's pretty cool right now, but this is this is big, right? This is the Steam page. You're officially mm. official, official. Yeah. So people can go right now, which I'm definitely going to shill right now. You can go <laughs> add to your wish list and put it on your wish list so we can see that you're even more interested than we think you are, because that's what we want to see. But yeah, so over the last week or so, we've been putting together the Steam page, Fox, um, utilizing some of the landscapes that a lot of you haven't seen yet, because. As anyone who's been to one of the shows before, we had the original demo and the most recent demo, which is the Sleep Worldy stuff behind me. And then this new stuff here, as you can see on the Steam page, if you head over to Fox or you head over to the Gamescom section on Steam, you will be able to catch and read all the information and see the nice shiny new worlds that are in there. So yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty crazy ordeal. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. So how, how freaked out are you guys right now? <laughs> the idea that your game is definitely real and... <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty freaked out. How long is a fog? Yeah, how um, long yeah. is a fog? <laughs> yeah, 15 <laughs> units. <laughs> yeah, no, it's awesome. So the people on the show are currently playing the demo that we've all seen here, which is the, the Sleep World demo. They're currently mm -hmm. playing it on Switch on the, on the show floor. We actually have the same demo here for the guys to play shortly. And they're going to talk you through what's actually going on. But let's 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 find out the most important thing. Like, which one of you came up with the fog? Like, who was it? Who's whose brainchild was this stretchy boy? Like, I don't think it was um, anyone. I think it was specific. Yeah, the three of us. We were we'd worked on a few games together. These two had released a game together, and we decided we wanted to make something as the three of us. We decided the best way to do that would be to lock ourselves in. A tiny hot room for a day <laughs> and just keep going until we came up with something we were really excited about and eventually yeah. we just loved this idea of having a big stretchy body that two players had to use to their advantage and to their disadvantage um, I know that in the past Doug and I had talked about Stretch Armstrong which he loved as a kid <laughs> like that toy that you were able to stretch yeah yeah totally so that evolved into the fog that we've got now after going through a few very strange other uh, oh, yeah. iterations. <laughs> and I, d I don't know how they even became dogs. Like, I think they've always just been dogs in our heads. Yeah. Yeah. So, just like yeah, they... Weird. Worm dogs. It just, just made sense to us for some reason, I guess, that... Yeah, of course. Was... I mean, what... Okay, what, what came first, though? Because it's a very co-op-centric game. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very clearly co-op with the two heads. You can play it single-player, but, you know, there's definitely a, a design choice there to make it co-op. I mean, even yeah. if you're playing single-player, you're basically playing co-op <laughs> by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the two halves of your brain have to really yeah, go. So, yeah. so what, what, what came first? The idea that it was a stretchy fog, or the idea that you wanted two people to be able to play? Definitely it's, two people. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of like synonymous thought right that was like a co-op game where you're controlling a single character mm -hmm. and yeah. the easiest way is like obviously like connecting them yeah we really loved seeing games where people would work together mm -hmm. and when we came up with the idea of the stretchy body that was co-op like I think we yeah. wouldn't have been able to make the game if we'd made it as a single player game only so it's just natural that it works as a co-op game no, that's, yeah, that's perfect. Um, so, should we dive straight into the demo and let you guys sure. talk a little bit about your inspirations behind certain characters, like design choices, whatever you would like to dive into, because there's a lot going on in Fogs, and if people haven't seen it yet, 
Um, there's there's some wacky ideas going on in here, so let me just <laughs> let me just bring up the demo. And everyone should be able to see it now. There you go. They are peacefully sleeping away in Sleep World. This demo for anyone at home is oh, currently oh, yeah. on Gamescom floor in Hall 91. Let's and restart. The demo has been with us for I think since PAX East this year, so a few people will have played it by now. Um, but you've never played it with them in the background. <laughs> actually talking about it. So, so yeah, as Carl said, this is one of the newer versions of the demo. Uh, we had another version of the sleep demo that didn't start with this nice kind of what we call a home area. So, as you can see, you've got the dog bed where the dogs start uh, sleeping peacefully. If you stay idle for a bit, then the dogs go to sleep. Which we've had in there for absolutely ever because people love it, <laughs> and sometimes they just watch the dog sleeping for so quite was a while. In the like very first like version. Yeah, yeah, the totally. Uh, you've got these cute bears who'll actually follow you when you run around. Um, I guess it's maybe worth saying we're calling this the sleep demo, but that's because the full game is broken into three worlds. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is one of the worlds, Sleep World. So yeah, do you want to, Doug, do you want to explain yeah, a bit behind so each concept? Because you've got three very distinct themes going on in Yeah, course. well there's like food, sleep and play are the three worlds broken, that the like, game's broken into, which is basically just like... I'm bringing the ball. What three things the dog's like. <laughs> that was the pure inspiration behind that. I mean, it, it's, the, it's perfect, really. The, as <laughs> the aspects of the dog. <laughs> yeah, James, <laughs> James gets really mad. Uh, Eat, sleep, pay, play, repeat. <laughs> okay. That's for you, Kane. <laughs> no, yeah. So yeah, this is uh, just a like showcase of some of the earlier parts of Sleep World. Okay, can, a... you're, spin you're spinning it around a lot, but like everyone knows what that big glowing thing is now. Like, look at the little face. Look at the little <laughs> face on that. It's called a glorb. Yeah, yeah this is, is a glorb. Thing. A glowing orb. Um, Do you want to, I guess you should maybe... Like say what you're doing. Yeah. Like, so like the uh, Henry and I have the controller shared between us. Uh, you can also split it onto two controllers if you're not able to share the controller. And so I'm blue. Uh, you can see me grabbing the glorb there. Uh, so if I use my left stick, then I move blue's head around. And if Henry uses the right stick, he moves red's head around. And then you got two buttons in the game. It's pretty simple. So. One button grabs, so we can grab this glorb and like ch chomp on it, drag it around. Uh, and in this instance, we wanted to wake up the worm. These are the sleepy connections between worlds. And if we jump down the worm, which at first players are a bit hesitant to feed yeah. themselves to a giant hungry worm, but um, you get it's used to it best. pretty quickly. Oh my god, I never noticed this little sleepy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's sleeping. That's amazing. That's really cute. Um, you can tell I'm a programmer because some of the art just goes past my eyes. I mean, don't, don't worry, the art still gets me because obviously on, on the marketing team, we, we see updates and we're not as heavily involved. But then every time we get a brand new build to play with, it's like, oh, look at all the new shiny things that we can explore and, and how cute everything is. And every time we get a new build, every single time, it is just... <laughs> mind blowing how much further along everything comes. So it's great to see this, and obviously the super secret bits that have now been slightly revealed at the Nintendo video and everything else. Yeah, like yeah. There's, there's a lot of cool little elements that are coming out of the box. So you, if you noticed, we collected a little yellow bone, and bones are the thing that we hide throughout the levels. So you can usually find a few of them in each level. Uh, there's a few in this demo, so you'll see us seeking those, or just bouncing around with this bear. <laughs> I just want to bounce with a bear for a bit. <laughs> it took a surprisingly a long time to make that bear behave. It used to kind of <laughs> zip, zip off into infinity at yeah, its own will. Um, yeah, so, uh, as we run... Sorry, you go ahead. Uh, the same part of like us deciding to go with the shared controller angle was just the idea of, well, we've tied the player together in the game. Why not tie them together physically as well? Yeah, because uh, then I can really <laughs> wrestle with <laughs> Yeah, I we, mean, it, it brings out something four. pretty special, right? You've got that idea that 
like especially when you see people play it um you see people who work well together and then you see people who don't work quite so well yeah. together and there's that case of like uh -huh. push me pull you like no i want to go this way no i want to go this way and they end totally. up with people falling off platforms and having to redo the puzzle <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun to see and people end up bonding a lot more over it and uh, there's a question from the chat are we going to eject in october yes we are we will see you there and thank you for the follow oh okay. Let's light all of these. So, we didn't mention earlier, but when I grab the glowing orb, the glorb, you see, out of Henry's end, the red end, there's a little torch. Don't so, ask too many questions here, just go Yeah, that, that tells you a little bit about the anatomy of the fog, which we get a lot of questions. We'll have to draw a diagram at some point. <laughs> like a proper medical diagram yeah. of a fog, yeah. yeah. And here we've lit up the campfire for the moth, um, this little moth creature who's playing a tune. Getting all these lights. So cute. Just every time, it's just so cute. <laughs> I just love the, the springiness of the floor, making it all like a duvet, like a blanket. Yeah. Just all bouncing along as you go. <laughs> oh? Uh, so this wall yes. stops us if we don't have any light. Yeah, so the Fogs is, is a cooperative game, and it's got these kind of um, challenging puzzles that use the dog in really interesting ways. and. We've always wanted to focus on the the fog's body and the way that you cooperate with each other. I think it's like once we had the like fundamental of the character, it was just basically like coming up with like what can we do with this that we couldn't do in a game where like we don't exactly have this what weird character. what can the fog do that no one else can? Yeah, <laughs> and just trying to get as much of because Mario the... would go through this world a whole other way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, He'd if we could jump the... high. Oh yeah. <laughs> We did have a bug at one point where you could infinitely jump and it made the game a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Doug still asks me to put that bug in. Wow, well, I've never got to play it, sounds great. <laughs> so, Fox is predominantly, aside from being insanely cute, is a puzzle game. Yes. Yeah. Was that always the intention? Was it like this co-op thing? That, was it originally you know, like a party game or did it start off mm. with something else and become oh, a puzzle? Or did puzzle just seem like the perfect fit from the get-go? Oh, nice. I think we actually know. Yeah, so when we were originally prototyping this idea, we uh, like originally called it Dog Sports, and <laughs> the idea was that it was going to be like a party game, and that mm -hmm. it was going to be about sort of these little competitive sports games and stuff like that. Yeah. But we decided, like, we came, we did come across like Push Me Pull You um, and other games similar to that that had already done it really. Yeah. So like. And really well. Yeah. So we thought, well, we don't need to add to this. What else? What else can we do with this idea? Yeah. And, and like simultaneously, we had been like kind of generating ideas for a more puzzle-focused thing that did use like connecting things. And Should like we jump down? Two, okay, let's go. two heads. The best part of the demo, you mean? <laughs> yeah, I think we realized that because you're sharing the body, players tend to go quite slowly, mm. and in a competitive or a party game, going slowly isn't always the obvious thing to do. And so by giving the player puzzles to solve, it really slows the pace of the game down and it gives you a chance to enjoy the environment. And it's like, more than anything, we wanted to kind of like get people to communicate while they're playing. And yeah. I think puzzles are a really good way to like force that kind of communication yeah. where you have to, especially if you're like working together, controlling the same thing, you have to kind of like talk about what you're doing and mm -hmm. like what's happening on the screen. <laughs> Or just or wrestle just against each other. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there was... At one point, there was a version of the game that had uh, a lot of the fogs in it. But um, we settled on the two players for the co-op stuff. Because it's just really... It's really nice to watch people learn to use the like movement of the dog and to cooperate together. And at the early events that we saw, we had, like, yeah. all ranges of people playing the game. We had, like, families who had never played a game with each other, like, father and son playing the game and really enjoying it, like, in a way that yeah. they hadn't had with previous games. And that just... Ooh. It just there's, really... There's definitely, a, there's definitely a case for that. Um, being one of the people who goes to our shows, um, mm -hmm. just watching a lot... You get a lot of kids who are obviously interested... 
the bright colors of fogs help anything. Uh, <laughs> and the, the kids get super interested. The the parent may quite often you find that the parent isn't like versed in games that much. Yeah. They yeah. Clearly don't play that much, but they yeah. like the controls in fogs are simple enough that you can pick up and just get going yeah. and figure it out together. And a lot of <laughs> it's adorable to see kids who you know are barely barely reaching the TV that we've got on our on our stand, and then the parent playing next to them. It's it's something you don't see with. You know that many games yeah. so easily. <laughs> it's always kind of a fun challenge to get some some of the parents uh, to play. So sometimes the kid will be really excited or something like that, and we'll they'll be like, "Oh, it's two player. You can play together." And we have to try and sort of coax the adult who will be like, "Oh, I'm not yeah, so sure. I'm not a big hesitant. player." Of I games. think that's like one of the main reasons we push to keep the controls so simple. I mean, you've got like halfway through explaining the controls, but it's literally like two buttons and the joystick for movement. Yeah, and what's over all... this way? <laughs> to, uh, to answer a question from chat, one, when is Fox coming out? Well, Fox is coming out early next year. That's an easy one to answer, but something that might be more pressing. And if people play the original demo, they may know about these, but can you dress up the Fox? is a question that I'm going to put to Doug. Because <laughs> Doug will have done something to do with the cosmetic aisle here. Uh, so we're currently like in the process of bringing that back in, but originally there was hats that the dogs would get, but they were based on like random little things you would do in that demo. But so the plan currently is to... The bones that you collect in the level that are kind of like nice little secret hidden things that you've let you do a puzzle slightly differently or just hidden away in a little pocket you'll be able to find these bones and we really wanted to give players something to do with those bones because otherwise it just feels like you're kind of collecting them for nothing so we thought it'd be nice to give people some like <gasps> hats to secret? collect and buy with your bones. Oh, yeah, so there's, there's the there's the answer to your question. You can get hats, which is pretty <laughs> special. And also, if you go to our Steam page right now, if you go to Fogs on Steam, you can see a little GIF, and there is a preview, and I want to tell you what hats <laughs> yeah, there are. Is. There is a little preview of a couple of the hats that you can get currently in the game. Unverified, but... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take this book up, so I'm just going to explain quickly. Henry and I, when we entered this area, which is uh, kind of the second part of the demo, we came across this tree, and when we opened the door with the key, this owl woke up, and you can see the owl's asking for a little book above its head. Now, we don't actually have text in the game at all, because we want it to be really accessible, especially for younger ages, but there are all these characters littered throughout the world, and each of them has a unique little uh, moment, which I guess is what we call it, a character moment, with the dog. Mm -hmm. So by having... <laughs> <laughs> By having these little characters, it really brings the world to life, and you get a feeling for who lives in the levels, because they're not just, like, platforming levels. It's a world, and there are characters living there, and we want it to feel alive. Um, yeah, I think, like, populating it and giving it that charm this like, little sleeping something we've always really wanted. Yeah, Henry, do you want to explain what this little guy is? Because I remember first coming across this, and then when I figured out what it was, I was like, oh! <laughs> so... <laughs> it's a very interesting little mechanic. This this little person is dreaming of a bridge. That doesn't seem that helpful until the camera turns around to this view. We can actually walk across this bridge. <laughs> that's in the dream. Yeah. There you go. So there's a, there's actually this comes up a little bit later as well. There's a couple more instances in this particular demo where you can see the unique ways that you can. <laughs> I don't want to say traumatize, but you, you don't necessarily uh, treat those little guys the best to, to get through the doorways and bridges that you need to get across. Yeah, well, uh, we say that Fogs is a game about going through these worlds and helping their inhabitants, but sometimes you have to kind of make a decision about <laughs> how the you help them. Um, and there's definitely always the case that characters aren't necessarily going to help you all the time. Sometimes they'll get in your way, but um, we've tried really hard not to make it a game about conflict or combat. It's about the different characters who exist in the yeah. worlds and how you can help them out and... The weird ways they interact with each other. Yeah, exactly. Well. So you can see here that we've got you can see both types of... Bone. What we call juice. 
<laughs> so glow juice and shadow juice. So these are just two things which depends. interact with the, the light coming out from the Glorb in different mm -hmm. ways. So we've got the shadow juice, which will disappear when light goes near it, and the glow juice, which solidifies when light comes near it. <laughs> I think this is like one of the main ways that like the themes inspired the mechanics a lot. Because mm -hmm. like, I think at the very first let's start of the game when we were originally prototyping everything, we hadn't really settled on like the world themes or anything, so we were kind of just throwing around a whole bunch of ideas of like, like door world. Yeah. <laughs> oh like, yeah, door yeah, world. Like world ideas, but like when we kind of like sat down and brainstormed and came up with the like food world play, that so, kind of like yeah. What did I just say? Yeah, food world play world. Sleep See, world. Yeah, food sleep. But did play. those did those three things come because you had so many ideas that you needed some way to kind of tame like because there's there's a lot of things you could do with fogs. If if yeah. anyone's played the demo, if you've even seen this bit, there's so many options you can do with this. But to be able to bring it down to distinct themes, I, I think it's like yeah, playing that is pretty good. A good way to tie oh, it yeah. to the dog as well because it was just like like anything could go because it's like quite cartoony and like pretty much anything could be made to work in this world kind of things but we want, really wanted to like have it have some like at least nonsense sense that you could like cling yeah, to. Yeah exactly I think once you start playing Fogs and you play a few of the levels you start to realize even though it's a really wacky world with all these strange ideas there is a little bit of logic and the we've tried to make it so that the worlds kind of interact in a meaningful way so as you play you get feeling for how the world works and so like these guys we were obviously like what's an interesting mechanic that could be based around a character being asleep or awake like i know how that guy feels right now i think, the <laughs> I think like the obvious thing to jump to was like oh we have a character who's like literally lying in your way and if he wakes up he gets out of the way like a snorlax or something <laughs> but that felt like very simple and there wasn't not much weird depth. Enough. Yeah, there wasn't much depth to how you could actually use that mechanic. Whereas when we came up with the idea that these creatures are actually dreaming about things and once they're asleep they actually like manifest in the world. It just like blew up so many more like options. So like in the previous puzzle he's dreaming of a door which blocks you so you need him awake, whereas in this version he's dreaming of Oh, you bridge. know I've never got that bone before. Yeah, a lot of people miss this burn. It's uh, pretty sneaky. That's the sneaky one. Even I've never noticed that. I was like, why seven are you putting seven. it that way down? <laughs> we got the bone celebration. I just, I really like the idea that you just have meetings where you're like, is this weird enough? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I think we need to, we need to step it up a level and make pretty it much. Weird. That's pretty much like our morning meetings. Right? Every every day we like start up the project and we go, okay, what's not weird? What's enough? not weird enough? <laughs> I just noticed what? the book's blank. Yeah, because yeah. none of the creatures talk, so <laughs> do they just have all these blank books sitting there? Oh no, like, they must be picture books. They're coloring in books. They're definitely picture books. Oh. <laughs> coloring in books, I like yeah. that. Yeah, empty notebooks. So where is like it? We need to find books. like the, the quills or the pens. <laughs> oh yeah, when you bring the pen to the dreamer, <laughs> yeah. it writes down its dreams in the books. <laughs> the owl is sitting on top of there as well. Oh yeah, if you notice, there's a little owl perched above the door. So you not actually said, but you can stretch. Is yeah, one, is so it, you can grab. You've got the bumper which grabs, and then you can also stretch. And each of you can stretch, but you can only get to a certain length. Um, and that's because used. You're quite elastic. You yeah, that, like, that's yeah. used all the way through the game to do things like pull something up a ledge, or uh, you'll see us use it in a second here. I said that's a that's a pretty big one. The the idea that you can only stretch sort of a, a certain point before the other person who needs to stretch is a uh -huh. big one that gets people the first time. Yeah. The first yeah. time they're like, oh, I can't seem to get far enough. Oh, if we work together, then I can stretch. It's a it's a nice little way of just making people cooperate that little bit more per yeah, puzzle. Oh. Definitely. <laughs> it's just <a> poor little guy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. This is eternal torment now. I guess. <laughs> yeah, looks... these characters may be. Aren't, like... aren't friends <laughs> in the conventional sense, but I like to think that they do have a kind of love-hate relationship. A symbiotic uh, Realistically, the, the guy's late, he just needs to get up, that's all. You yeah. know, the, the clock is helping, really. That's all. I mean, speaking of stretch, do you think we should 
Huh? Dude, do you think we should do the knot? <laughs> oh, see, oh, this this know. has been this myth it, it, has been spoken like of, and no one believes knot. that you can like tie a knot with a fog. A so if you want to prove it on I've stream right now, it. I'm sure everyone at home oh. will be oh, yeah. ecstatic. <laughs> oh, oh you just gotta get through that little hole. There's no way you can do a co-op. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be here for hours. Yeah, this this We're going, this. You've promised it now. Now everyone in the I chat think... wants you to make a knot out of these fogs. I think the first time that I made the knot, I didn't know it was possible and it completely blew my mind. Like, we had talked, like, through the whole development of the game, I think I'm gonna we talked to. about the possibility, like, can you t do the fogs in a knot? And then one day, Jamie just did it. And we all <laughs> lost our was minds. Like in the middle of a meeting when we're supposed to be discussing something important. Yeah. <laughs> What's more important than trying to make a pretzel fog? Oh. <laughs> we oh. love how fogs can survive. Oh. Oh. I think that's there it. we go. That's that's it. It. Yeah. <laughs> that's the perfect that's, pastry. Yeah, and as you can see, <laughs> it makes a pretzel, so if you go up to... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. You can't get eaten. Unless the, you go in the worm. That is the most ridiculous thing that I have seen yet in Fogs. And that's saying <laughs> So this is one of the f fun cooperative interactions we've got in the demo, which is rowing this dream boat off into the the moon set. Or the moon rise? The moon fall? <laughs> just into the moon, I guess. It's just, look, just... At, look at how happy, how happy it is that you are coming towards it. <laughs> This oh, is also yeah. the Gamescom build, by the way. Just to be, yeah. just to be authentic, we kept it in German. <laughs> just, it's nice. Just for everyone, just for everyone at home who wants yeah. to feel like they could actually be at Gamescom. Danke fürs Spielen. Danke fürs Spielen. So yeah, that's that is the the demo that is currently available at Gamescom in mm -hmm. Hall Nine. And if you are watching on Steam right now, because we are casting both to our Twitch and to our Steam, you can head over to our Twitch slash Copesync. And you will be able to chat with everybody else here. Because there's quite a few people chatting and getting over the top excited about the knots. That <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we'll switch up from the demo for now. And we'll come back to that probably. Because I think there's some more stories left in there. Yeah, so if we is. go back to the sofa. We have, one, we have one thing we haven't shown you yet. Which is nothing of any use. It's just something that we thought would be a fun idea. So we also... We, we have a fog cam. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's our real life fog in its bed. <laughs> just, just over there. So just in case you wanted a pup cam, because you yeah, know, we don't, just... we can't, we can't summon a live fog from the game, but we can, we can have a fog cam for yeah. you while we're talking. And um, you, can... you can now make sure that the fog is happy. And if you look, if you look real close, it's a really small fog, also. <laughs> now that I see it, I think it's just crochet just, made it needs by Henry. Hefty. Henry, how many of those have you made now? These. Yeah, look at them. Look at them. <laughs> Just get the other one. There's another. I can see another one. Isn't that? You <laughs> they come in various sizes. Yeah. Uh, and now everyone. So this Very is basically Henry. Edition. Henry is now about to announce that he is quitting Bitloom. And he's going to start Starting making fogs crochet. forever. <laughs> yeah, uh, it seems like. Someone said, "What can you use them for?" Well, there's. The fog phone, <laughs> the fog headphones, the fog cushion, uh, the fog plane cushion. Oh, you totally, fog. you could totally do a neck, like a neck cushion for traveling. Oh, as a fog. Yeah, yeah. So this is like, this is now going to, the next half, the half of the stream is going to be <laughs> merch yes, ideas. <laughs> so, so that's, that's pretty special. The, the puppet is over there. I'm not a puppet, sorry. The puppet is in Germany. That's the plushie. Sorry, we've got too many fogs now. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it's possible, They're we have multiple. too many. Can I, I really buy, need can to. Can I buy one for my cat? You're gonna give a fog <laughs> to your cat? I mean, oh no, it won't survive. <laughs> yeah. is, this, is this? Are you just angry because we're not gonna make fats? You mean <laughs> <fat>? yes? <laughs> oh, I really want to go and pet the dog. I feel like it's you, lonely. You can, as long as you don't trip <laughs> yeah, over don't, anything. Don't, yeah, don't yeah, bring you, down. You, you can prove cute. that this is real and that it's actually a live feed. <laughs> 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 It's just a creepy hand. You got like stroke. Show, show yeah. your face so that they know it's not just a disembodied hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. So good. Right, so the, the, the boys brought along basically all the crafts that they've been doing around their own game. So they're yeah. the the berries or acorns, whichever you decide to make them. The bogus. Yeah. <laughs> the bogus. Yeah. Does yeah. Get in. You ready? Come on. 
Yeah, don't trip, I, don't trip over anything, because I will murder you. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> everything just collapses. Everything crashes down. <laughs> All right, so let's go. So we've talked about where Fox is at now. We've mm -hmm. talked a little bit about how Fox initially started in terms of just like where the initial idea came from. But like you, before before we found you, lost and weary, <laughs> crawling <laughs> around Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> before we found you, you you guys had done something else. But you guys had done pretty well for yourselves because you were to do with something called Dare to Be Digital with Avatar University. Do you want to explain a little bit? about what Dare to Be Digital is and how on earth you guys got involved in it. Yeah, so the three of us actually studied at Aberdeen University in Dundee mm -hmm. and Henry and Doug still work in Dundee. Mm -hmm. um, and Aberdeen runs a competition every year. It just ended as if I... Well, yeah, a little so late this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we were part of 2017 Dare Academy. They rebranded it that year and it became Dare Academy. And we pitched Fogs for it. We had like a really, really early demo, and they. <laughs> I, yeah, I think we, basically just, we just basically had the fog working. And yeah, yeah. In so like it was the character, box. <laughs> and <laughs> people seemed to see the potential of it. Uh, fortunately for us, and they <laughs> said like, uh, "Yep, yeah, you're in the competition." So we spent that summer basically. It was like a few months with a bunch of the other teams there, and we worked on the fog's demo, which we showed at EGX that year, mm -hmm. and that... That was basically just, like, purely, like, learning, like, what the hell is this game? Like, yeah. you have this character, but what does it actually do? Yeah, and Like, we, how do you interact with it? We came up with lots of ideas and ended up building what is now kind of the start of Food World. <laughs> it's gone through a million iterations since then, but it was Food World, and we showed that demo, which the was... Much, much shorter. <laughs> yeah. And Actually, I can bring up I can bring up the very old trailer. Oh my god, yes. Oh, that's so exciting. Let me, let me switch to... Switch to me. <laughs> like... There's some... There's like a really... Oh, no, there's an even uglier one Do you want the, the real? We can go We can go further back. Yeah, go <laughs> We can wind back the clock back. a little bit further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the oh super, my god. super oh, yeah. early <laughs> prototype, which is... This is the only This is what we showed. Incredible. This is what we showed to get into Dare. I guess this, yeah, this would be... So... I don't... Have I got... Is it gonna be like the mosaic yes. block and stuff? Oh, the so. dog... It's the old dog heads. Like yeah, so the old dog heads have got a huge mouth. I've got a really big nose. Yeah, this is where it all began. <laughs> yeah. So you can see... Literally the same grass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, can, you can see that we had spent so much time on the character and not much else. Um, and so I that's... do love the little... The, you just attempted to give the box some personality yeah. by drawing a little stick face box. on it, basically. Yeah. And it runs away as well. It, likes to, it, it tries to roll away from you. So as we said earlier, we'd gone through a few iterations of kind of competitive party games, and then this was some of the early puzzles, uh, the idea of like you having to work together so one of you was dragging over the box, and then here What's you... What's the jump? You think the jump really is far? Uh, it's so if you stretch, so you in this version... You can't stretch at this point. Oh, yeah, I didn't, didn't have stretch. You can even stretch, oh, which is... What, but what is a fog if it can't stretch and tie itself into a puzzle? Yeah, <laughs> it's just a hog. Pre <laughs> it's just a hog. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, we're not bringing in the feral hogs discussion on this stream, thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, oh, pitched, we, had the we pitched this core and ended up probably. spending the summer of 2017 working on the Fogs demo, which we showed at EGX. So yeah, that was That's... that was the kind of like final thing to their academy, which did all, look better than this. <laughs> yeah, all, all six games got taken to um, EGX. Um, that was 2017, right? 2017, where yeah. you guys met us. Um... Yeah, so I ended up kind of pitching the game to a bunch of people, and we actually showed the game to Nintendo, there, EGX, and a bunch of other publishers. What is, have we recorded um, this? How did we make such a meal of it? <laughs> yeah, I know. We clearly only wanted to do one take. <laughs> but, yeah, so we pitched the game, and then after a while, like six months, um, of talking with people, including Coatsync, we signed with you, and you since made, then... You made, the, you made the correct choice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I think for us, we wanted to work on the game in a way that we'd be able to experiment with it, and we knew that as developers yourselves, like you'd made a bunch of your own games, you understood that process of experimentation, and that really let us make Fogs what it is today. And also, because you're developers, you obviously have 
a bunch of really awesome talented people who are now helping us. Exactly, yeah. Them. It's yeah, not I just the you, three you, of us how making many, How many of us are now giving you various support? Well, from, we've got um, a few uh, artists um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and anime Proof that you remember them all perfectly. Uh, <laughs> and then we've also had help from production the oh, whole time. Oh, oh. 3D roll and <laughs> sand. And oh no, it's Pepper Pig. Why? What? Is that on an <laughs> <laughs> Carrying on an incognito window, that's what it brings you. Okay, that's kind of terrifying. I'm just going to go back. Yeah, and that. we've also had QA and sound working on the game as well, even mm -hmm. though Henry's been doing the majority of the sound effects so far. Sound at Coatsync. Um, yeah. Yeah. And. We're just, like, we definitely wouldn't be, like, anywhere close to as much. That's the thing, stuff it's the game, totally yeah. a team effort, and even though we like started the game it's all of us working on it now and it's all the better for it yeah that's the the vr just brought up now is <laughs> what actually ended up being the demo that we showed yeah. for the first this would have been what you guys played and like yeah this, I mean, this is what yeah this is yeah. what we saw this is what we saw before you guys joined with us yeah um so this is <laughs> this is slightly more polished than the last video we just yeah. showed um, and so, so this was early though so this was a few months' work uh, at Dare, um, working out of Aberta University, full time. Like, most of it was just like learning, like what kind of puzzles we wanted, like how big levels should be mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, it's obviously like changed a million times yeah. since this. And so now this is a lot of what Food World is, as I said earlier. But also parts of this are in what it's we call the kind of. Uh, home area, which is where you'll start the game, and um, what kind of like tu tutorializes together. some of the mechanics, like grabbing and stretching. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's switch yeah. back to the regular camera. With the, with the fog cam, because we need to make sure that the yeah. little fog... I say little fog. That, <laughs> that plushie is massive. Yeah. You only, you only realise when, when you see our puppet that's now at Gamescom and everything else, just how large <laughs> that puppet actually is when it's stuffed. <laughs> okay, James, you've got it. No one's watching. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. It's Why fine. is it so rolling? <laughs> it's roly boy. I mean, Fogs literally is just a roly. It's a sausage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> why would it not be rolling? That's why they're so Good. easy to crochet. It's because they're just sausages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you guys, you guys actually won uh, Deadly Digital yeah. with so Fogs. Derek had me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I forgot that the name changed. So you so, got to. I mean, it was very good that it did change because otherwise James wouldn't have been able to join the team. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, because there was a, a reboot, and then they... Yeah, everything. so I was in the year before with a different game called Mung Stones, and then uh, entered with Fogs the year after because of the name change. Yeah. Loophole. <laughs> so, so, oh so for the loophole of the system, Stop James it. is sat here today. Yeah. Yeah. We're <laughs> all sat here today. Otherwise, it would, it would just be Doug, Henry, and, I don't know, Barry. John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just some other guy, and it would be Cats. Would we be don't talk Fox. about Barry. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk about Barry. <laughs> Dark universe, James. Right, okay, so we are talking currently through what's been going on from like a, a Dare Academy, not Dare to be Digital, but Dare Academy. <laughs> and we've showed off some of the very original versions of Fox from the very first one yeah. to, to the sort of slightly more polished version. But wait, And we've been through the demo that's even closer. But we do have one video that not that many people have seen. Uh, unless you were paying attention to Nintendo yesterday. No, we don't want to watch Tom and Jerry. That's not what I was trying to put on. <laughs> we do have one more thing. So we'll go through this, and then we'll go through it slowly, and the boys can talk a little bit about Pick what each one. world is here, yeah. because mm -hmm. there's definitely something you haven't seen, because so far you've seen what was old Food World, I want to call it, yeah. and new Sleep World in the new demo. Mm -hmm. So here, if I uh, make sure I've got sound on, because I forgot last time. This is actually what was played on stream yesterday, or a portion of it was. And it's up on our YouTube right now. Oh, do you need to switch? Oh, I do. Yeah. That was <laughs> I'm watching it. I'm enjoying it. You're, you're like, this is great. <laughs> this is perfect. Let me just can we start that again. This is professional over here. But yeah, as you'll see in this, I think it's like 35 seconds. There is a lot of different things that you have not seen in anything else we've shown so far. Yeah, including Pop. Ridiculous how much. Or even how 
<laughs> Even when we like go for the level. Of course, the fish still have to make it in because the fish are adorable. So if I just let this finish up, and then if we take a skip back, come back, I always can do it automatically. There you go. So this color color palette is slightly different. This looks kind of similar to the first demo. What what sort of biome is this? Uh, so we call it Temple mm -hmm. because it's kind of like this mysterious, slightly uh, like built-up environment that uh, you will start the game in. So this mm. is a scene from the tutorial which teaches you a little bit about the game quite naturally mm. and also introduces the world of fogs as like this weird place where there are all these strange worm creatures and the double-ended fog, obviously. Mm. Uh, and so the purple grass and the yellow brick appear a few more times throughout the game. Um, and we call it, like, the home world, because actually it's from this world that you'll go out to sleep yeah. world, play world, food world, and we explore were those. to, like, give you kind of, like, a central hub that you can yeah. feel like that's where, like, the someone, someone, sorry, someone in chat has said that I would wear some fox trousers. <laughs> I know, that there's blew next, my mind. There's the next idea, because basically yeah. any, <laughs> anything with two ends in clothing or merchandise, then you've got it. Are you gonna? Are you showing off the cape now? No, he's, gonna, the fog he's trousers. wearing, oh, he's, he's gonna, demoing oh, fox trousers. <laughs> 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 Brought the most practical example prototype. we can give you right now. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, don't encourage him too much or oh, try yeah. and put the plushie on. We don't. them down. The TOS will not allow what he wants no. to show. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's skip ahead a little bit here. So what have we got beyond this? So this this blew my mind because I don't even know how you think of this stuff. <laughs> You're just like, oh, we need we need to make a bridge. Okay, cool. Uh, what can we use? It's food world, so I guess celery because it's a stick. And then we're gonna have you soaring down the celery yeah. as the fog because of course. Yeah, with well, a double ended that song. classic like double ended like cartoon saw is like mm -hmm. the most obvious like sort of two person interaction that we could think of. I think of it was this. like, didn't you once Google like things that you can only do with two hands? I did, I, I could. <laughs> <laughs> so we've obviously been working on the game for uh, quite a while now, since 2017. And so at one point I thought, well, why don't I just look at what people do with only two hands? And it came up with a lot of blogs where people had said, oh, I've injured one of my arms and I've discovered these 17 things I can do with only two hands. <laughs> and one of them was use a double-ended saw. <laughs> uh, and so I was like, well, why would the fogs not use a double-ended saw? <laughs> but, um... I mean, I'm glad I'm glad you went into the real depths of research looking at the <laughs> top 10 things you can't do if you only have one hand. I think but, it's, like, hard to think of that stuff sometimes because it's, like, so, like, natural mm -hmm. to just do stuff yeah. like that. So it's definitely good to... So Being one reminded. one question that I don't know if many people would have thought about too much is everything in Fogs in terms of the level design and everything else, everything's like these sort of I wanna say floating islands. You can definitely see it in some of the other shots more than <laughs> more than others. Is there like is there a reason uh, other than just thematic that you chose to make everything kind of like the floaty islands, just allowing you to do more with it, I guess. I think I generally well, just always draw floaty islands and stuff. Like <laughs> one of the reasons, but I know that, like, at the beginning of the game, we really like this idea that you're being transported by these huge creatures that kind of brought you to each world. <laughs> and by the nature of those, like, creatures stretching between islands, it made sense that they would be, like, floating. And it also solved some of the problems that we had about, well, if there's all these strange worlds, how are they connected? But if they're all floating off, kind of, in the distance, then, in theory, it's all one huge world. You're just yeah, traveling definitely. quite far between the floating islands. And you'll see, like, there are other places in Fogs that aren't just a floating island, that they've got, like, some water around them and things like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But, um, I think yeah. it's, like, it also helped solve the, like, obviously as a puzzle game, we wanted to have quite, like, compartmentalized little levels where yeah. you could, like, kind of see everything you'd need to see and you could, like, move around, like, yeah. between it, so... I just naturally like. I think it was kind of always like that. Yeah. Just like. Yeah. And we still wanted to feel like a real place, which yeah. is why we often put clouds to kind of hide the bases of the land, as if it's stretching down mm -hmm. into the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> 
Can you can you ride a bicycle? I mean, is that a question you're asking the team? Or yeah, you ask I, the can, I can say. I, yeah. I, <laughs> eight years old, I learned how to ride a bicycle. I mean, it's not it's nothing to be ashamed of. If you can't ride a bicycle. It's just I don't know whether you're asking the fog because we can go and ask the plushie, and I'm sure at some point we can make a video to see if the fog can ride a bike. But, I think um, dexterously, they can be yeah. I think hard. they can ride a motorbike because then they're just using the handles. So they could do something but like that. A okay, bicycle so... would be difficult because they'd have yeah, they have to steer have and pedal. Oh, yeah. So yeah, they're, they're, if you oh. have two fogs, <laughs> you need two fogs. Yeah, one two on fogs. Handles, one on <laughs> yeah, Fogzilla. So okay, so that's. The expanded universe is that you need two fogs to ride a bicycle and only one fog to ride a motorbike. So as, they're basically maybe. speed demons. They just like going really fast. Yeah. No point in bicycles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they, by that logic, they couldn't drive a car either, really, could they? It'll take a few. Be, <laughs> I'm now imagining you're like clown cars and just fogs keep coming yeah. in. Yeah. That's all I'm seeing now. It's just fogs everywhere. Rushed in. <laughs> Yeah, that was a, that was a, that, how did that question take us that way? Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's have a look at the next clip that we've got here, which is beyond. So this, this is potentially my personal favorite, which if I just play it a little bit, you can see a very, a very fiery fog. Um, just looks like potentially eating something spicy, maybe. Maybe yeah. this, these so fogs need yeah, to learn what to eat and what not to eat. <laughs> um, ending up here creating popcorn, which is... Just a genius little touch. Was <laughs> too far. Um, and the chomping sound just helps. <laughs> but yeah, so do you want to explain like, the idea behind this little mechanic itself um, and whether this was a... Because this seems like something you just thought you'd try and then it ended up really, really cool. Or are you just the masters at creating fox puzzles at this point? I think... So actually the, the eating things came it was almost one of the first things we had I in, we had eating before stretching yeah actually. in the game it was one of the first yeah. things because we really liked the idea that you are a dog and obviously dogs love to go around and bite whatever they can and so we had like these little berries that reappear in food world and you were able to eat them and then they'd kind of get swallowed by the dog uh what we realized is it's not that fun to eat something and then just kind of have eaten it okay, so but also like we we had it that you could eat something and then spit it back out again but because of like the physics nature of the character, is you had no aim and it was useless, really. <laughs> so. um, yeah, and then we spent a long time without any eating in the game. It was mainly just the the hosing that you've seen, which is what we call when you grab the glorb and then the light comes out I'm the other end. I'm pretty sure I can switch to that. Can I? Yeah, and then but I think it was like good, the people at cutscene either like Matt or Paul. Yeah. Feed there you go. We're feedbacking and saying that was the that was definitely what we saw. It was in the original demo. Is yeah. the, the uh -huh. very you, you grab one end and some some reason the water comes out of the other end yeah. of the fog. It well, you're a big that's, worm. That's just the way that it make, That's just the way that it works. Yeah, that's the way sure. the fog works. <laughs> sure. I'm not going to so question it any further. I, I seem to remember it was a combination of the fact that we had done this hosing and we had the hosing of light and water, um, and I had always liked the idea of flamethrower fog where you would hose fire but we didn't really know what would produce fire now at one point someone at cuts and clogged earth said um matt i think or paul came up with the idea that what if they eat a chili <laughs> and so we reintroduced this idea of being able to eat things and so yeah in food world you can find these chilies in the world and because they're far too spicy for the dog if one end eats the chili the other end will burst hot flame from its mouth <laughs> and you can use that to do things like uh, pop popcorn which this character is very happy about who you can see on the right so, so realistically either red or blue whichever one eats it is basically trolling the other yeah, one because much, the other yeah. one has yeah. to deal with the consequences yeah <laughs> yeah and there's definitely a certain amount of coordination needed to um, aim hot flame it just from... speeds you up as well, doesn't it? So yeah, it makes you very quick. As, well, up. eating a chili makes you really fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why that Sonic. Food works in that's why Sonic's so fast. <laughs> chili dogs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can see the character on the right there has a little popcorn basket above their head. Mm. So they are definitely in the mood for popcorn, and the fox can provide it. It's it's. it's just, I remember this was when we were producing this video. Of, for the actual Nintendo stream, just seeing this little mechanic pop up, and I was like, "You're kidding me! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did they think of this? Because there's there's already enough 
many things that I can't talk about. There's already enough interesting and crazy, like, little ideas. And what I said earlier about you guys having a meeting or like, is this weird enough? It seems like this was one of the product <laughs> products of that. The fact that you <laughs> you could just say, oh, be a chip, but what can you do with it? There's many things you can, you know, set everything on fire, but that doesn't seem particularly family friendly. So the, <laughs> the idea that you just, oh, we'll just make some popcorn. Yeah. Seems like the next logical idea. I love it. I think fogs in general, it's like, it's almost an issue that we had that when we first started the game, it just generated so many ideas. Because I think it was just, it was so weird. And that was like our biggest problem to what, begin like, with was just like refining it down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To... Trying to make sure that we're putting things in the game because they were really fun to play mm -hmm. and not just a smart idea, yeah. which is always a problem is that as designers, we want to make things really clever and kind of logical, but often it's the silly things like popping popcorn yeah. that are the most enjoyable. So that's what we try to include in so the So is your, is your cutting room floor filled with ideas that you really wanted to work, but they're just not interesting once you yeah. put them into the game? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've tried really hard to get most of them in there, but yeah. there's definitely... It's like there's a certain amount of like, is this just been put in wrong and we can make it interesting and then eventually just have to either say like, it could be interesting, but it's going to take so much work, or it's just not that interesting, and we should just cut it. And yeah, yeah, you have on the good stuff. You have to kind of let go of ideas when they don't work like that. I think that's like one of the good things of like the fact that we have like collaborated on design quite yeah. a lot. Is that I don't think any of us feel like super precious about any particular thing, totally, so it has yeah. been easy to like treat the project as like its own thing and whatever is going to work best for it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's obviously super important as anyone who's worked on a project in a team of any kind knows exactly, that, you know, yeah. it's, it's very important to be able to distance yourself enough to realise when your idea, while you may have spent all night and, you know, really need some coffee, it, it's still not <laughs> actually going to make it through and yeah. that's okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's uh, move on. Where's, where is the next one? I do remember. Oh, of course. This is, <laughs> this is the... the like... I said this was weird, and <laughs> I forgot all about the fact that the next one is the, the monkey bars toaster thing, which, does someone want to explain who came up with this idea and, like, where the hell it came from? That you was just, actually Jamie. That yeah. was like, you just put it in one day, and we were yeah, like, okay, I, this is amazing. It was like, we were like, test, you're like, can you test this, like, puzzle, which is, wasn't even, like, this was just a bit before the puzzle, but you're like, can you just test this, and we're like, okay, we're doing test I think <laughs> it's definitely something that that we try to do is we we've always said that the game is supposed to like surprise and delight people which is I guess in other games often it's about challenge or it's about um, kind of overcoming the obstacles but in Fogs we want it to be surprising and yeah. so often when we're designing we'll just put something in to surprise each other yeah. and those are the things that stay half the time I feel like and there's so, so many times when we'd be like spending a day building levels or something mm -hmm. and I would or like one of us would be like no we can't show you you're not allowed to see <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly we'll keep things we secret need to like, it needs to be like good for yeah, when yeah. we reveal to each other because that's kind of like the first test of like if we're like whoa that's so cool about each other's stuff then there's a mm -hmm. pretty good chance other people will enjoy it as well. yeah. yeah and with this specific example the monkey bars there's something that do appear in the game before like Obviously, as a big long body, well, saw, like, they're perfect. In that very first video, we had monkey Oh, yeah, like way back. First demo the first was ever monkey ever bars. Because yeah, they, were us... used, they were used fairly extensively back in the in the first demo, because I remember there being a couple of instances throughout that you have to use those. So it's, uh, yeah. it's definitely one of the first. I think it is actually, isn't it? In the first demo, it is very much, pretty much the first example of you really need to work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and so when I was making this section, I'd done monkey bars a million times, and I thought, well, what if it's food world? What if the monkey bars were toasters? And you okay, kind of like, have... I'm just going to stop you right there. Like, where did you... Like, how did you get to toaster? Like, what came before it? Surely there must have been some monkey bars that weren't toasters to start with. Or did your brain just go, yeah, toasters, of course, makes perfect sense. Uh, <laughs> well, that without giving too much away, I think I was like, I've got a giant spatula, so why wouldn't I have other kitchen utensils? So maybe I'll have a toaster. So, uh, yeah, I ended up putting in the toaster, and at first, it didn't pop out the toast. It was just, like, something you could grab. 
And then I played it and I was like, wait, no, that feels horrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, a toaster would pop out toast. <laughs> so I made it that it can pop out toast and... Thankfully, I took out the infinite toast, which it used Wait, to produce. It used to, if you grabbed onto it, it used to just produce just infinite toast, <laughs> uh, which caused a lot of issues. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure people would buy those in real life because that sounds great. Yeah, that's, yeah. Like, keep yeah. that's more true. Toast. Yeah. yeah, the fog toaster. <laughs> um, Spawner. Yeah, and then you can actually see it was one of uh, the people at Cutsync who recorded this video, and you can see if you watch closely. Oh, oh back on time. I wish we could slow it down. They grab yeah. the toast, they eat it in midair, which I can't that? do. Yeah. <laughs> you can also see the nice steam that's coming off. This is where this is where you find out, everyone, that the rest of the game is quite barren because James spent yeah. all this time yeah. <laughs> making sure the toast looked just perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, the um, toast doesn't even have a model. <laughs> but yeah, there are too many of our secrets, <laughs> Yeah, so actually the toast came after the chili, if you're wondering. Like, we made these chilies that you could eat, the chili the and then we <laughs> decided to add a few other things so you can eat toast in the game. Um, which dogs love. Dogs love toast. Do they love toast? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, dogs wait. don't dislike toast. Yeah, they're, they're, there's not a lot that dogs won't eat. Mm -hmm. We've I mean, tried to, be... to be fair, chilies generally aren't something you would feed to a dog. Which, no. Hence the reaction that the fox get, I guess. It does... It does it does fit. Don't, don't. Okay, don't try this at home. If you ever own a fog, don't feed it a chili. Yep. There we go. That's that's the yeah. safest disclaimer I can give right now. So we just skip on to the next. We know what this is. This is obviously included because it's just pretty. <laughs> like, I don't like. It's just. I remember when I first came across this in the original. Well, sorry, in the sleep demo. Um, a, a while back now, and was just like, this is just the cutest. Which is generally most people's reaction to fogs in general. It's just like, oh, that's cute. Oh, that's cuter. Oh, no, this is even more cute. <laughs> so yeah, like this. Who who came up with who came up with the fish in general? The whole like, because like sleep world fish not necessarily correlated that much. Like, where did that idea come from? I'm gonna it's assume it's Doug of some kind. Well, I think Mac, we the... had a fisherman. Yeah, yeah, Matt, one of the artists at Kurtzink, who's been like doing concepts for us for a while sketched a little fisherman which i think was just like one of those kind of like it's dream logic like yeah yeah i yeah. think i think part like part of this Nonsense. the kind of theming for this first area was, was supposed to be kind of like a Pot. dreamy campsite yeah, like, yeah, like that as well like yeah so you're out in the wilderness, wilderness and people are camping so there's like, like a little bed rolls and yeah that. we had a little pond so the puzzle if you saw earlier was there's this little pond but it's made of the shadow juice and so you've got to bring the Glorb to it in order to get through. But uh, we like adding characters to those areas to make them feel more alive. So by adding this little fisher person who is like fishing in the pond for the Glorb, it just naturally produced this idea of, well, if there's a pond, there's fish. And yeah. we love the idea that there's just these dreamy fish that kind of fly around sleep yeah, world kind of beautiful. doing their own yeah. thing. Really cool. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a lovely little moment to... Essentially, it's it's the equivalent of going through a worm and coming out the other end. It's giving you that transition between one mm -hmm. area to the next mm -hmm. in a different way. And that's, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's super cute. Mm -hmm. We wanted really to like... make it feel quite like dreamy as well by like yeah. slowing down how fa like the fog doesn't fall as fast through that area as well. So yeah, it's so you kind of get a bit of a chance to take it in rather than just going thud. <laughs> 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 and cushions to cushion your fall, obviously, because we don't want the fog to just. Slap into the ground, <laughs> even though it's indestructible. Oh, don't don't give away the whole <laughs> secrets. <laughs> Someone will find it's kryptonite if you say stuff like that. Which I guess is chili, really. It's not that indestructible. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't like chilies very much. Yeah. It's, oh, it's just gonna, someone's just gonna bring it really hot sauce now. That's all it is. All right, let's move on to what. See, I keep saying like this is the cutest. No, this is the cutest. Here we go. I'm doing it. I'm doing it myself because I'm forgetting what's in the video. And this is. Well, it's actually the end of the Sleep World demo uh, for people who have played it or might be playing it. Um, and it actually does round out our video um, here. But, like, again, where does this stuff come from? Like, where like where does this little little dream boat, which is literally what it is, <laughs> that little, little rowboat, like, where, where does this... Does this come from because you wanted... You really like the idea of the two oars? Mm -hmm. Is that yeah, is that the I general concept just, for this? I think I definitely... I did do, like, a sketch of, like, a guy rowing his bed around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. But then we were like, oh, the fuck, like, rowing's a really good co-op, like, 
two person or two hand activities yeah. that makes a lot of sense for you to yeah, I mean, I guess I haven't really looked at that much. I guess it is actually a bed as well, mm, isn't yeah. it? Bed boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bed boat. Oh, yeah, the, the consensus, these little, these little, like, creatures, what are they? What are the little creatures? Moths. They are moths. Are yeah. they wrapped in a little blankie? Is that what Yeah, so is? instead of wings, they've got a blanket. Yeah, it's kind of like mm. their wings. But... Which is Amanda. <laughs> okay, made that. Uh, I think I mumbled that. Actually. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, there's, there's a lot of moving the parts. Boat, yeah. The programmer should remember the boat, every piece of art. It's like, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Beth and Lewis are in the chat. It looks yeah. Like. Hey, Beth. Hey, Lewis. <laughs> Do you believe they had just said hello? So they are. They are there. Everyone. Everyone is watching you. No pressure. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so if, if, as this is now the end of this video, like where, do you want to talk a little bit about the sort of general concepts behind the, the three? You've got food, sleep, and play. And you've got sort of a general theme with each one. You've got the, you've got the very purple color palette of sleep. And you've mm -hmm. got the now very vibrant and quite, the food world is very literal now. Um, <laughs> when the, I remember back when we first asked, you know, what, so what are the biomes? What are the, the themes going to be? Yeah, you've yeah. got you've got Sleep World, which even back then was still very much Sleep World, yeah. um, just on an early stage. Mm -hmm. And then Food World. Food World didn't have a lot of food in it, which was quite <laughs> yeah. confusing to start with <laughs> early on in development. So seeing it now is like, oh, now I get it. Now it yeah. makes so much sense because now there's food everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. With Food World, which was the first world we kind of developed, we did get into a bit of a corner where we were trying to make this game about a double-ended dog and a lot of the environment was just based around what the dog could do and at that point it was mainly being able to water and grow things mm -hmm. but as we developed Sleep World we realized that the environment and the world around the fog should have its own personality and mm -hmm. it really makes the whole game come to life when there are things going on in the background that don't involve the dog like obviously the book tree is a good example of that. Um, and so when we came back to Food World, uh, it took us a bit of time to really focus on, well, this is a world about growing things, so there should be things that other people, like farmers yeah. and villagers, have grown. And so we have all these other pieces of food that are all throughout that world. I think um, it's kind of the thing with it being a puzzle game as well. I think the first pass of everything we did, like the first, like year of development it was very much like this is a puzzle game we're gonna make the puzzles and like we're pretty much not gonna touch the theming or the art and like any characters that were in there were purely puzzle based characters so like, mm -hmm. that was kind of like the core of all of our focus and then once we had kind of done that and came back and looked at it we were like okay we have a puzzle game but there's like for what like the game itself we wanted to always wanted to be like full of charm and like the surprise yeah. and stuff. So it was like, oh, we need to like make sure we get that in now and actually add these like more fun side moments that yeah. definitely just add yeah. a lot of interest. And then Play World, which you've probably not seen any of, mm -hmm. um, where Food World is quite kind of uh, like grassy and foody. Play World is vibrant and <laughs> wacky and over the top and it's without, kind of without like... spoiling anything you think the stuff we've seen so far is weird <laughs> <laughs> that's literally the best way the best way to put yeah. it without giving Definitely, any spoiler yeah. is like you get you've got food world now like 2.0 food world mm -hmm. as i call it is super vibrant there's loads going on sleep world is adorable in mm -hmm. every manner and then play world is like okay we're gonna have some fun here <laughs> i think like we... but the, the, our motto for ages whenever like one of us would suggest an idea that was just like too weird or like didn't make any sense we we're like oh that sounds like more of a play world thing <laughs> and play world was the last world it was, we yeah. developed so when we finally came to it we were like okay let's just put everything that we haven't put in yet in here <laughs> it became like a toy box and that's kind of yeah. what we call the theme is like it is a crazy toy box with all these um, strange little things going on in it. But I think it's like from, a... from like the screenshots that you are able to see just now, you can see the play world starts on a beach. Play yeah. world does not finish on a beach. <laughs> <laughs> that is, a, um... yeah. It was always like just the fun, like like especially weird interactions that used the dog in different interesting ways that we 
couldn't always find like a place for in the yeah. other worlds. Like Play World was always like kind of an anything goes like Yeah. Like and that toy box. The introduction introduces the world as this kind of beach amusement park fun fair type of place. Uh, and then it slowly grows from there. You can imagine the kinds of things you'd find in an amusement park or a fun fair. And it takes those ideas and it grows them and grows them until it gets to the finale of Play World, which um, is out yeah, of control that, uh, and amazing. Everything, <laughs> everything about Play World is is insane. <laughs> <laughs> in a good, in a great way. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. There's, I think, one of the biggest things about Fox, definitely so far, is that the the difference between each biome. Well, I keep on calling them biomes. I'm so used to saying that word. I didn't mean to. The I theme, like such a Minecraft. The theme boy. of each. <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm just a Minecraft streamer secretly. That's all I do. Yeah. Um, the, the theme is so vibrant between the three of them um, that it just it gives you that like refresh. Because I think out of all of them as well, Play World has like a lot. Like all the worlds are kind of like broken up into three areas as well with their own like <laughs> unique style, which. I think in Play World is the most exaggerated. But... Yeah. Yeah. That's... Sorry, I cut you off mid. <laughs> <laughs> But you can, uh, yeah, I'm, we're going to show it. Lewis has just brought it up very, very conveniently in the chat that yes, you can, you can wish list of <laughs> on Steam. It's, it's almost like people are working with me here. <laughs> but yeah, we are, we are live on Steam. There is also, you can also find us on Nintendo. But yeah, we are, we are live with wish list. So if you're in the chat and you haven't clicked this wish list button, uh, I'm not disappointed. A little bit disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> go and go and find us out. We're actually on. I can show you without showing a million things. If you go to the front page of Steam and hopefully we'll find it. Where's it gone? Where's the Gamescom thing gone? Wow, that ruined my segment entirely. What happened? There's actually, there is. That's insane. Okay, that ruined. The Steam just ruined my moment there. Oh look, we're actually. We're broadcasting, Fox, funny enough. <laughs> this is now Inception, because you're now seeing me mess around on the other part of the stream. Uh, yeah, so you are, if you search Fox on Steam, you will find us, and you will be able to wishlist us, and we are coming out early next year. Uh, sorry, did, did I see you're coming to Stadia? We have not announced anything to do with Stadia. Um, we are coming currently to Nintendo Switch and Steam. There is nothing else to announce. So yeah, that's that's the platform. So wishlist on Steam right now. Go on right over to Steam and click wishlist. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop shilling just for just for a moment, and we'll uh, we'll talk about. Actually, I don't need. Let's go back to the sofa. Ah, and the fox back. There we go. The other one's back in in full size almost. Yep. <laughs> you and your, you and your teasy teasy tweets. Ah, oh, well, that is that is the point of them. That is <laughs> it got it got you here and interested. <laughs> so what else do we have to talk about? Because we've gone through we've gone through the the general like themes of each world. Um, mm -hmm. The concepts themselves are wacky, insane, weird. I don't like I don't know what I don't know I don't know how you describe Fox surprising. in that sense. Surprising. I mean surprising is playful. Sure. Yeah, but that's playful. it's that case of like whose whose theme is whose favorite? Like uh, if you've got to pick, you've all got you've got play, you've got sleep, and you've got food. Like whose world is now the favorite? Because this is a, a warped question for you guys because you work on it. Every yeah, I know. Day. It's yeah. like we have the memories of working yeah, so, on those levels yeah. and what was hardest. And so stuff. objectively, from your standpoint, not from the the us like me who's just obsessed with everything because it's all new and shiny to me. <laughs> like from your from your aspect, what's your favorite right now? Right now. Uh, I'd say I really love Sleep World because I think it puts the fogs in a really like dreamy place where you're meeting these characters who can be from all kinds of strange dream worlds and it's really relaxing and I just love that and I think a lot of fogs is about trying to not make a game that is uh, action packed and you constantly being under pressure to do well. And so Sleep World is kind of like the epitome of that, where you're just gliding slowly through these levels, discovering <laughs> these little nooks and crannies, and it's just so relaxing that um, I love it. Uh, yeah, it's definitely my okay. favorite. Doug, okay. come on. Yeah, what are you going to I mean, I don't know. 
<laughs> I mean, you, I you, you have the you have the harsh trouble because you know you go into a lot of this, like there's a lot of your time is just creating these to look yeah. distinct and interesting and weird and wacky. I so. think based purely on like how, like how far it's come, I'm a big fan of food now because it was like kind of a problem. Well, not a problem, but it was like it's it the weakest like, point, right? A hard one yeah. for us because it was our first thing and we were still learning like what the hell the game was and how we make these levels and stuff so mm -hmm. like seeing where it is now compared to where it was it's like crazy and very exciting and stuff and I think it's like got a lot of that like charm and character and exciting like yeah. new moments that we really the little the little dudes hurt. with the, the melon hats are uh. I mean I think <laughs> there's there's actually I can because I can see it on the steam page so I'm not spoiling anything <laughs> the, the dude with the, the like orange piece around <laughs> his neck. And when it came up, everyone was just like, "Is he wearing an orange?" <laughs> it was just the best moment when we saw the first initial screenshots. I think it's like, like yeah, it's just given us a lot of chance to just let all that silliness and like playfulness back into mm -hmm. the to game once we'd got all the like serious puzzle stuff out of the way. The puzzles are fun though. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's serious. I think like in in dev terms, like. We got quite serious because we did want there to be like some like a decent challenge for like people who like want to like actually get stuck into the puzzle. So it's like as developers, that was like the serious part of the development, and then it's yeah. like the other parts a bit more silly and playful for us. Wacky stuff now. <laughs> I just noticed that somebody asked, uh, "Is it single player?" And yeah, the game you can play the whole thing. One controller, single player. I think I can, hang on, I can switch. If I switch to the demos, I can show in the menu, right? Switch is does it still switch in the menu. I mean, it won't. It doesn't I don't, yeah, make I don't, a difference because it's one controller. Yeah. yeah. So you Henry, you have got two controllers in front of you. He can play before. single player, or if you should, do this, the, is, this is this. I don't do it live. This may completely mm -hmm. break, but you should be able to. There you go. And now I'm left dog, and Henry is right dog. Right dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just let's just to give you a live demonstration and put the boys on the spot and see if that yeah, works. You can always <laughs> you can always share the controller as well. Um, if you want a more intimate experience <laughs> of wrestling. Yeah, the idea the idea of like sharing is great and fun and then there's the two controller in case it's more convenient for you because you know Exactly. You, you might both have a real comfy chair and no one wants to get closer. That's yeah. that's fine. Whatever your reason. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever your reason, this is James disapproving and like, no, you should. No, no, no. This, is, this is how I wanted you to do it. We want to accommodate for uh, everyone who can play the game, yeah. wants to play the game. We want them to be able to play the game. So. Okay, so Henry, Henry your world. You got to pick play now. I mean, yeah, give I guess a good I reason to play to world. Play. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do play. actually, I do actually really love play world. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> I just. This was rehearsed earlier, it took us about yeah, yeah. minutes to get them all to agree to pick a different world each, so yeah. I think just some of some of the like weirdest stuff that I did yeah, I went like, into quite a lot of your like streams. Like, There's just like a lot it? of bonkers stuff that I did that I was just because I was in a position of power to create stuff <laughs> no through one was the there to stop programming. <laughs> yeah, no one told me no, so <laughs> yeah. I was just did some like really silly things for that that I'm really proud of. <laughs> that, like it's been, it's, it's in a real fun. game. Yeah. I think <laughs> Play World. I love watching people play the other two worlds, but Play World is when I see people's jaws drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's when I really see people like how. <laughs> yeah, we had because it was the last world. We didn't have the most freedom. Uh -huh. We gave ourselves the most freedom. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's cool. That's, I mean, I genuinely, like, I hadn't asked that question before the stream. <laughs> so the fact that they all picked a different world each is pretty spot on. I'm, I'm impressed and proud. So, <laughs> that actually just about rounds us up for the day. I think we've we've gone through the, the new demo. We've gone through the, the new content that people have been able to see through Nintendo. Uh, we've gone through the fact that, yes, you can wishlist us on Steam if you didn't hear me the first time. <laughs> <laughs> you will be able to play Fogs on your Nintendo Switch. And you've learned a little bit about where these guys came from, what they started with, the a very original demo that you saw that they showed to Dare Academy to get into it. <laughs> uh, 
and how far it's come. I mean, if you look at the screenshots that we flicked through, you look at the even the even Sleep World demo that's up here is still like above and beyond what happened in the original demo. Um, so thank you guys for coming. Thank you because <laughs> no joke, these guys have travelled for was it six? How many how many hours was it that everyone's travelled for? Yeah, good. Yeah, I yeah, travel some more travel. <laughs> Tune out traveling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so everyone, everyone's traveled a really long way to get here. Um, so make sure you wish list for them, not for me, for them. Do it for them. Do it for Go yourself. <laughs> 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 okay, so we will we will round out the stream now, and just so, like again, just so you're aware, Lewis has so kindly put it in our Twitch chat that you can find Fogs on Steam right now. 